necessary. Okay. Is Sarah here? Yes, she is. Okay. All right. So uh, my computer says five o'clock. Jenny, are you gonna are you going to uh, say anything like Christian did, or are we just gonna move on? Yeah, I have it ready. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I think so. It's five o'clock. Okay. Um, good evening. As the moderator of the Port Angeles School District Remote Board Meeting, I would like to welcome you to the November twenty second, twenty twenty, Board of Directors Special Board Meeting via Zoom. This meeting is being presented remotely for all attendees. Items to be mentioned before we begin is to note that this meeting is open to the public and is recorded. You can listen to all past board meetings by visiting board docs through our district website. There will not be a portion of tonight's meeting reserved for community comments. However, please email jwilson at cordantoschools.org if you would like correspondence shared with the board of directors. Thank you, Jenny. Welcome. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody online who's here tonight with us uh, to the Sunday. Did she freeze? Sarah? Yes, yes she did. Yeah, I'm unable to hear Sandy as well. She seems frozen. So um, while we work on that in the interest of time, uh, I can, are we, we going to lead this leg of salute and have Cindy speak as well? All right, how about we start Cindy with you and hopefully Sandy can get unfrozen in the time. Okay. I would just say it's November 22nd, 2020. It's five o'clock PM. We acknowledge that we are on the indigenous lands of Coast Salish peoples who have reserved treaty rights to this land, specifically the Klom tribes. We thank these caregivers of this land who have lived and continue to live here since time immemorial. Thank you, Cindy. And so with that, I also would like to, as Sandy was, said, was saying, welcome. I noticed that we have many participants here because this is a very interesting and very um, fraught issue that we're dealing with. Um, so I would like to lead us in the uh, flag salute. So if you would join me. I'll do it uh, elementary school style with ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So Marty, with that, um, do we want to wait I, a little? I would like Sandy to be here before we get too far into yeah, the discussion. Me, can, we, can we take just, just a, a minute break here? I'm going to call her and see if I can help her get back online. Absolutely. Yeah, if we could give it approximately a minute or so, she, her internet has crashed. She's trying to log in on her phone.
Okay, Sarah, your call. We can wait a little more time or we can go ahead and get, get started your, uh, your call. I'm thinking, I'm not ignoring you. Um, wow. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people here on a Sunday night. Um, I feel like we probably just need to get going and hope that Sandy can get in soon. Um, that, I guess, is my best advice at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, so I um, uh, have just a little information tonight for the board to um, consider um, in this very, very difficult position that we're in. Um, and then I will make a recommendation prior to board discussion uh, based on uh, what I'm about to share. So um, the, the thing I want the board to hear and um, the community in the room to hear, this is, this is obviously a very, very difficult position. Um, to be in and the pandemic is, is um, creates uh, new challenges day to day and week to week. Um, and this is just another one of those challenges. Um, our, you know, before we get started on um, the uh, material we covered tonight, we've made uh, enormous progress in bringing students back on our campus. Um, we, um, you know, exceeded 16, we exceeded students last week, um, you know, uh, in-person learning opportunities for students within our system. And I am, one, like, extremely proud of the efforts of this board and of this school community to make that happen. Um, and, you know, regardless of the decision tonight, the expectation moving forward is in-person learning. We will get there. Okay. And... So with that being said, last week, um, I had an opportunity to present to our school staff and uh, the meeting went very well. And um, I shared um, kind of how our school district and our board has made decisions around, um, you know, very almost impossible uh, decisions to make. We really put our, I mean, and, and what I stated on that day is with the, with the pandemic, um, there is information flying from you as school leaders and each one of us um, from every direction. And regardless of the position that you have around the pandemic, you can find information to either justify your position um, or be an argument against somebody else's position. So it's, it's difficult to say the least. The two, um, the, the two groups or the two uh, governmental bodies that we put our faith in in this school district are one, um, the Washington State Department of Health, and two, our local health official, Dr. Unthing. And I maintain that commitment to those two sources for information regarding our school um, reopening um, and uh, plan. So with that being said, I want to um, share my screen and take us to our website real quick and remind um, board and those that are in the room, um, our reopening plan um, is on the uh, the the, the, the uh, main page, and um, you know it's all available for the community to read. Um, but I do want to what do want to call attention to um, our planning from August of 2020. And if you look here, I'm just about there, I apologize. So here, um, we called out in several locations um, the decision tree that was um, provided by the Department of Health in August of 2020. And um, this, this information came from the Department of Health by way of a modeling um, or by way of the Institute of Disease Modeling um, uh, guidance or, or model um, and considerations for in-person learning across the state of Washington. This is not new for any of you, but I, I just feel like we need to review where we've been and where we might be going. Um, in that plan, um, 
you know, the, the state really calls out three levels of community transmission, high being greater than 75 cases per 100,000, moderate being 25 to 75 cases per 100,000, and low being less than 25 cases. Fortunately for our school and our community, um, we've spent much of our time um, in the range of low to moderate. We did have a peak, um, you, know, in, you know, three weeks prior to the start of school in August, where we uh, exceeded um, 100, uh, per 100 cases per 100,000 for a short period of time. As of um, the last count from uh, Clallam County, uh, we now have uh, 149 cases per 100,000, um, and uh, that, that number will be updated tomorrow. So I want to call back to, you know, our planning and, you know, the importance of the decision tree as we move forward, um, you know, both then and I believe now. So and this is where um, I need, to, I need to, to quantify the Department of Health decision tree just a little bit. This is not official, and I want to say that again, this is unofficial, but um, the Washington State Department of Health, um, by a number of, of um, leaders across the state of Washington, um, both local and across the state, have referenced that you know, there will be a change to the decision tree. Um, and there will be a change to the classifications of the high, moderate, and low ratings. The unfortunate piece for um, us at this time as we're posed with this question tonight, that change has not taken place. Um, but it's, it's, you know, potentially in the next week or two, um, there could be, um, or you know, maybe a change to the decision tree as it relates to infection rate per 100,000. And again, this is unofficial. The conversations that I've heard from no one official, I have to say that a number of times, is the new moderate range between the moderate and the high range will um, be somewhere in the range of 175 to 200 cases per 100,000. So that raises the 75 per 100,000 to, you know, somewhere between 175 and 200,000 cases um, in a last in a 14 day period of time. Um, and, and again, in, in my conversations, I believe that change is coming, um, um, you know, soon. Um, but again, it's not official. But I think in our decision making tonight, um, you know, that should be uh, considered as, um, you know, um, where the Department of Health may be guiding us. And that's where we've put our, um, you know, our trust and value in the State Department of Health in our own plan. So um, second piece I want to speak to this evening is um, our health officer, um, Dr. Unthink. I, and I know this board, have put enormous um, faith in Dr. Unthink and helping guide us through this uh, pandemic. On Friday, um, from, and this is the report from the Clallam County Emergency Management System, Dr. Unthink called out right here, and I'll read it to you in case you can't see it. As of this moment, there, there is no intention of Dr. Unthink to shut down per, or person learning, in-person learning at the schools. School, school superintendents may, may decide to do this, uh, but there is no requirement by the health department to do so. Dr. Unthink has found the protocols and procedures put in place by the schools um, have been highly effective and no recorded transference has been reported in schools. Um, there have been people that have been infect, infected at school, but um, they have not determined, um, that has not been determined to have gotten worse at school. Um, they only brought it into the school. The protocols placed have kept others, including students, from contracting this thus far. So I wanted to share that with our board as the most recent statement from our health official. And I also want to share with our board this evening our Oops, 
Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I've got a And I also want to share with the board this evening um, our current um, data dashboard for COVID cases. Um, again, we have uh, just under 1,700 students on our campus, um, well over 300 staff. And to date, um, as of you know, 5.15 um, today, uh, we do not have a COVID positive case um, within our schools. Um, but what we do have is this. Um, in the, week, the weeks preceding um, last week, we had um, uh, unofficially, and this is all unofficial, because what we don't get from the county health department is a call when there's an official quarantine from a community transmission um, you know, we just don't get those calls or we don't get a call when somebody is quarantined because of travel. We get a call for a positive COVID. And so, um, you know, the, the, the weeks prior to last week, we were um, working with um, one, maybe two potential cases from community transmission within our school system of approximately, you know, uh, 4,000 individuals between staff and students. And um, all of those ended up being, um, you know, those close contacts ended up being negative uh, tests, but were quarantined and uh, we did not have action within our schools. The la this last week, where we've seen nearly a 500% increase in cases in our county, um, that has changed. Um, we have, and again, this is not official, this is, this is unofficial based on information shared with myself and or other administrators. This last week, um, we have um, 33 staff and students in either official or unofficial quarantines. And that could be for a number of, you know, that could be for travel, that could be for, um, uh, you know, close contact, um, that might be, you know, um, an individual doing an unofficial on themselves because of a perceived close contact. Um, but but the, the, the uptick of potential cases on our campus have increased significantly. Again, prior to last week, one or two um, cases of, you know, uh, of, uh, quarantining. Um, but last week, um, a significant uptick. Um, I, and in looking at this, um, you know, data, it, it will uh, most certainly um, create um, disrupt disruptions and challenges within our schools. Um, and again, we have been very, very lucky. And I'm going to say it's more than luck. Um, our our school staff, and when I say our school staff, I'm talking about you know all of our. Um, school school populations from you know the teachers to the principals to the custodians to the secretaries we are doing phenomenal work in our safeguards um, I had an opportunity to go out last Thursday and um, walk through each of our elementary schools to just do a, um, a check and balance on our safe safety protocols and um, I stand behind them um, they are working and they can work so I mimic what Dr. Unthink has, has stated most recently about our protocols are working. The reality is, um, as the virus grows in our community, it grows in our schools. And again, um, you know, 33 um, official or unofficial quarantines um, as we speak is a significant increase in, in, in those um, experiences within our schools. And so that's something that I want the board to note this evening as well. As we um, move forward, um, I, I do want, Scott, are you on the call? Yes, I am. 
Scott, I want you to just speak a little bit about um, the potential challenges we're going to be faced with um, staffing moving forward as it relates to travel. Sure. So as I'm sure that you're all aware, uh, Governor Inslee's proclamation mentioned that anybody traveling out of the state has to quarantine, should quarantine for 14 days. We've already had um, some of our employees who last week had to be quarantined. And with the Thanksgiving holiday upon us, we cannot control what our employees do. Some people have had travel plans set for months and they're not gonna change them. We have got approximately for certificated employees, consistently maybe 36 substitutes who are filling in for us. And we've been making it so far. And the reason we've been making it so far is that half of our uh, teaching staff, grades seven through 12, are working remotely. And so if they happen to have uh, the need for a sub, they may not need to because they're working remotely. But my concern is that coming up after next weekend, that we're going to have enough staff that will have to be quarantined, that we will not have enough substitutes to fill our needs. The next problem, of course, is going to be Christmas vacation, winter break, and we'll be in the same situation if the governor's proclamation is extended. Right now, it's supposed to go through December 14th. If, if it ends December 14th, where we are where we are right now. But if he extends it, we could have a similar problem that I anticipate that we're going to be looking at next week. Thank you, Scott. And then finally, um, for consideration this evening, um, I want Michelle to just share, um, you know, the preparation that our um, our district has, um, you know, prepared for this very moment. Um, you know, if if there's a need to pivot to, um, you know, remote. Uh, so, Michelle, you want to give a brief update on the preparation? Absolutely. So I think the very first thing, obviously, to be clear about is this is not March. So we have um, obviously learned from March and been planning and working closely um, with our teams all summer and now, as, of course, as we go into the fall. So I can't say enough about the hard work of every teacher, every staff member, director, principal, in their work um, to create a consistent instructional model K-12. And that is and that is what we have right now. Um, our model is strong, it's it's going well. Um, we are able to meet students' needs um, with technology relative to being a one-to-one -one district. So when a student has needed a Chromebook, um, we have taken care of that. Um, if there's a student that doesn't have one, I don't know about it. So we have we have met that need. We are working. We've worked hard to provide Wi-Fi access for any family um, or student um, who did not have access. And again, um, anytime that it comes up, we're taking care of it. We've also worked really hard to be flexible and um, to make sure that our students have uh, meals, and um, breakfast, and lunch. And so. You know, anytime we've had a change in schedule, we've worked closely with transportation and with food service um, to get those needs as met as well. Of course, a big focus for us is the social emotional needs of our students. And so all of our staff K-12, whether they're remote learning or they're in the hybrid, um, that is their first and foremost, foremost um, focus is on that connection with students and creating that sense of safety and belonging and significance um, for those that student and those students. Um, and then our academic focus, knowing that, um, you know, coming out of last school year, um, we know what kids, um, what students were exposed to, what they're able to learn. And then we knew we had to plan this summer to be ready to focus in on those essential standards uh, by grade level and certainly by content areas. So teachers ha have done that work and are doing that work. So currently 7th through 12th, as you know, is remote learning. Those are in place. 
that's going um, well. Good positive feedback from students, staff, and parents. Uh, we're bringing in small groups um, for intervention and supports across our secondary campuses. Uh, for K-6, uh, we are to the AB hybrid model as called out in our plan. And I can't say enough about the strength of our teams across all five elementaries. It's incredible. So um, they have been meeting um, weekly actually since August. So every first grade teacher gets together every Wednesday, every sixth grader, sixth grade teacher. And they've been doing that up until this past week, we started going every two weeks, but they've been meeting every week. And part of that is that they have planned out as a team, their scope and sequence and instruction for both um, the remote learning days and the in-person days. They have planned that collaboratively to include the essential standards, um, the instruction and the assessment, um, the videos, and they have that planned at through at least the beginning of January. There are some teams that are already planned out um, looking into February. Um, that's how focused they are and on the same page. Um, it's an incredible ask and, and they have done it. If there are things that have come up, um, either with a school calendar or um, right as they're into the instruction, they're realizing, oh my goodness, we need to adjust. They're doing it as a team. And so even right then as a team, they're pivoting just within our hybrid model. Um, so I know that if we are going to ask um, for a pivot of some sort in um, the future, that we have a solid foundation um, from which to do that. So um, I have every confidence in every uh, staff member, teacher, principal, is doing that work right now that we have what's in place if we need to make a pivot uh, to a remote learning model from our current uh, AB hybrid. Thank you, Michelle. So with all that being said, I know we've spent a lot of time talking to the board this evening and I'm gonna roll out my recommendation and open it up for conversations. Um, uh, my recommendation this evening out of respect for the Department of Health and our local health officer um, is that we maintain in-person learning until we reach um, a level of greater than 200 cases per 100,000. Um, and in that case, if we do exceed um, 200 per 100,000, we transition to um, remote learning. Um, at the end of that given week, whether that be tomorrow, we finish out the week, or a week from now, we finish out the week out of respect for our families and our staff and all of the hard work that they're doing. So again, my recommendation is to maintain in-person learning until we reach or exceed 200 cases per 100,000 in a 14-day period of time. And uh, in that case, we would, um, you know, transition to uh, remote learning at that point in time. Um, I do want to call out that the intent of the school district is to maintain um, in-person learning uh, to some uh, capacity for those students that um, you know potentially um, need it most. We have many intervention programs in our system, K through 12, including tutoring at secondary levels. Um, you know, we have um, some hands-on opportunities for classes that simply can't be taught remotely. Um, we have R2 students that don't benefit from, um, you know, from distance learning. And so um, the intent will be provided that Dr. Unthink, you know, continues to advocate that the, the safeguards and practices um, are safe. We would have some in-person um, opportunities um, for those students that need uh, interventions at that point in time. So with that being said, um, I will turn it over to the school board for uh, further discussion and or questions. Thank you, Marty. Uh, and good evening, everybody. I'm sorry I was late getting to the meeting. My Wi-Fi went out, but I'm good now. So I'm, again, I see we have a lot of people uh, listening and watching tonight. 
I know everybody is anxious to hear what we're thinking and what we have to say. I think I'd like to uh, just go around the table, um, so to speak, and let the school board members talk about this. This is the first time we've been together to discuss this, so uh, I'm curious as what people are thinking. So do I have a volunteer to go first or shall I call on somebody? I can go first, Sandy. I've written out sort of all my thoughts, so I, okay. I won't take long. Um, Thank you, Sarah. So, um, I, I first, I, I feel very strongly, and Marty, I'm very happy that you um, agree that, that we complete this week of school. I feel very strongly about that. The worst, I know I've heard a lot of tension around this idea that we're going to just stop school tonight and kids were on their own tomorrow. So I'm really glad that that is not the recommendation. Um, and I also feel that we're within that 14 day uh, window. So we really are still following our plan, right? It was to be in uh, uh, the moderate range for 14 days and we still are within that window. We haven't broken 14 days in the high range yet. Um, and I also, Scott, thank you for your points. I do agree that uh, we have that concern with travel over the holidays, what that's going to do to us. So um, I, I am very worried about that. And that may be something that to me is the one thing we are going to have no control over because we don't have the right to tell people they can't travel. Um, but it is going to increase our numbers. So I, I worry about that. And I hope people are taking as much precaution as possible. Um, I, I guess my overall preference is we remain in school. I could, if you had uh, recommended that we take a pause after this week until after the winter holidays, I could have lived with that. I prefer the recommendation. And um, I'm going to continue to follow the science and I'm going to follow Dr. Unthank's recommendations. Um, and, and I really also, the thing I want to call out Superintendent Brewer, where I think you're, um, I think you're just doing an impeccable, an impeccable job. And I think I probably speak for everybody here. Um, and that idea that we, if we hit that 200 mark, that we transition out of in person, but giving our families time to deal with that instead of just being another like this, I, I just think that that shows a lot of compassion and the, the right way to do things. So with that, that's all I have to say. Thank you, uh, Director Methner. Anybody else? Katie? Katie, you need to unmute. There you yeah, are. I got it. There, I got it. Thanks, Sandy. Um, well, I, um, you know, I, um, I advocate that we keep the, the kids in school. Um, uh, I feel that the, um, you know, the progress we made, I don't want to slide. Um, I feel that um, the protocols are in place and they're outstanding and um, everyone's doing a really good job. Um, I um, will agree with the um, 200 per 100,000 in 14 days, like Marty's um, proposing. Um, I, I, I guess I, I would probably also suggest that we have some sort of um, uh, board check-in at that point, because if we hit 200 per um, 200 cases per 100,000 and we still have no cases in the school and we still have the staffing available, I kind of feel like, you know, we should continue with the school. So I'm, I'm really looking for anything to keep us going. So um, maybe a check-in at that point you know, another emergency board meeting would be fine. Um, you know, I, it, our kids are completely bored, they're depressed and they're unmotivated. And, you know, this is, this is you know, this is uh, an issue. We need the kids to be in school and in activities as much as possible. And I come from a place with a couple of kids at home and I just, you know, I really see that, you know, um, you know what you know you can like marty was saying we can find evidence or we can find um anything to justify our position so i'm not going to say that i have all the science or have read all the science because you can read science on both sides of this so um i'm just saying that when i look at the kids i see that um their health you know it's it's probably safer for them to be in school than to not be in school so um, um 
Anyway, I can agree to the 200 per 100,000 in 14 days. And rather than just automatically transitioning, I would suggest that we meet again. That's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Director. Um, is Cindy there? Cindy Kelly? I'm here. Um, I'd like to hear from Maisie um, before I talk. From Maisie? Talk. Maisie, are you ready to uh, to speak to us? Maisie, our student rep, is she there? I can't see her. Cindy, can you see her? There, she's having trouble with her mic. I think she, I think she's unmuted. Yeah, but you can't hear her still. Jenny, do you have to release her? There she is. I see her. Not sure who's in charge. She, her mic is muted. Every time she tries to talk, it automatically mutes. I don't know why, but that's what keeps happening. Now try. Well, we might not get to hear from Maisie. I really felt that it was important to hear from Maisie. Jared, help us. Jared, help us. <laughs> Jared's not here tonight and neither is Christian. Oh, no. Trying to get to head first and fixed it. Okay, she's gonna get, she's going to try to get some headset. I have phones to fix it. I'll see if I can drop her down to an attendee and then back to a panelist. Jared okay. is here. Jared is here. Thank yeah. you, Jared. I can't yeah, unmute her. I tried to unmute her. I don't know what's happening. I think it's on her end. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll go ahead and talk. Um, I like the recommendation. I'm concerned about staff. Um, yeah, it's you know, we, we received some letters from some community members, which thank you very much for communicating with us. Um, I'm really concerned about the social emotional health of our students and our staff and just our whole community. I mean, we can't control the case issue, but um, I do agree, Marty, that we need to keep kids in school at this point. Um, and that's kind of all I have to say right now. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. Maisie. <clears throat> Welcome. Oh my gosh, yay. You're Hi. good. Hi. Um, so I'm coming from the place of a student, so I think I'm a little bit biased. But I would agree with Katie about students' mental health, and I really want to be an advocate for that, um, of not only because their mental health affects their physical health and I am worried about the virus and I want to trust the science like Sarah mentioned earlier. Um, of course, we want to keep our kids in school as long as possible. So I think following um, the superintendent's recommendation of um, following out the week and then um, having that check-in that Katie was talking about, about where we're at and when we can bring students back would be good and having that communication open with the community and our students because I think that's the most important thing right now um, is to have that channel. Um, so yeah. Cindy, did you have a question specifically that you wanted to ask Maisie? No, I just feel like uh, student opinion is very important as we make these decisions. And I don't know if Lincoln is involved, is on the call or not. I haven't seen Lincoln. Lincoln is not on the meeting as I <clears throat> see, unless she called in. Okay. All right. Thank you, Maisie. Um, Jake, how about you? Yeah, I have a couple questions before I, I talk. Okay. I think, Marty, you could probably answer them. Uh, um, what's the reason for the new decision tree? So the, my understanding, 
my understanding for the 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 modifications to the decision tree are based on um, Department of Washington State Department of Health Department of Health have um, you know analyzed data from in-person learning across the state of Washington, and they've found um, you know. Um, COVID is obviously in every corner of our state, but um, they found that in school, in school transmissions, that doesn't mean somebody doesn't bring it in the school, but in school transmissions, as of two weeks ago now, two weeks ago Tuesday, um, the information that I heard from Dr. Unthink was there were um, uh, 10 um, accounts of in school transmissions across the entire state for, for districts that are um, carrying out in-person learning. So um, I think the Department of Health um, is really looking at that as, as one factor to potentially raise that, um, that moderate level to somewhere between 175 and 200. <clears throat> um, the second factor is um, the Institute of Disease Modeling did a model um, that I know the Department of Health is looking at very closely that um, looks that looked at diagnostic testing, but also looked at countermeasures that we're taking in the schools now, and um, you know found that the measures we are taking in school really um, um, aligned with um, the minimal in in school transmission with it across the state. And so um, I think I really think as the Department of Health learns more information around our state and and um, you know what's happening within the schools that they're looking to uh, address the, the, the framework accordingly. Okay, um, the number 200, where did it come from? Jacob, I've heard, um, you know, and again, it's all unofficial. You know, I've heard uh, a range of 175 to 200 uh, cases per 100,000 before you reach the high uh, community transmission point in which, you know, the Department of Health uh, may, um, you know, uh, ask uh, districts to uh, transition to in-person or to, to remote learning. So um, 200 is a number, you know, the 175 to 200 is a number I have been hearing for a couple of weeks. It is completely unofficial, Jacob. And um, I'm just trying to make the best of a bad situation here yep. and trying to respect you know, the work of the Department of Health knowing that something's coming and respect the work of Dr. Unthink and her position that our schools are still safe um, and our practices are working. And so this is, this is a way to try to respect both of those decision-making bodies that I have a lot of uh, value and respect for. Okay. Yeah, you've been doing a hell of a job. I've been watching you guys. Our administration's been doing, faculty, everyone's been doing an awesome job and I don't think closing schools is a good idea, um, but I think it's necessary right now. Um, I can tell I'm, I'm outvoted here, but um, I, close is the wrong word. We developed a plan that was able to roll forward and roll backward based on number of cases in the decision tree that we agreed on. Um, it's the only one we have yet. I know there's one coming, but this is our program and cases are up and we have a way of rolling back based on, you know, we have a nice little diagram that shows what to do. Um, I don't think it's good. I think it's good for where our school's at right now. Um, I don't think it's good for the emotional health of our students. I think that what's been happening right now has been great, um, but, we're seeing a spike in cases. We're about to hit Thanksgiving where we're expecting more. Um, we don't know if 149 is the peak or if we're just on our way up right now. Um, I love that we haven't had a single case in school. Um, that just speaks really highly of um, the protocols that have been put in place and the fact that like kids want to be in school, so they're game. They're down to do whatever they got to do to stay in school, and that's great. But what we're looking at is we're not gonna feel the effects of the spiking cases for a couple more weeks. We're not gonna see that, that's kind of how it works. We have 149 cases now, we have no transmissions in school. That's great, what happens in two weeks. Um, 
if it were up to me, I would say, obviously we can't close schools right now. Uh, you can't just do it quickly. I would say we finish out the week, um, see what cases look like after the weekend, give everyone at least the Thanksgiving holidays to prep and plan. And then either wait until cases go down or there's a new decision tree. Okay. Anything else, Jake? Nope. Any other board members have anything else to say before I, I have carry on? I have a couple more things. Marty, okay, can okay. you um, elaborate on the 14 day thing? I'm just want to make sure I'm understanding the 14 day, maintaining the 14 day. It's uh, the previous like 14 days um, and the number of cases per 100,000. What, what's the specific question, Cindy? Well, I mean, so we're going to, so when we get to 200, we're automatically just going to shut down. My, my recommendation to the school board is, um, and Jacob is right, like we have a, we have a, a matrix now. It hasn't been updated. And I'm giving you unofficial information but out of respect for what I think is coming, um, you know, in because of the the lack of um, in school transmission, um, I think that will change um, in the near in the coming days. Um, but uh, you know, that's 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 all. You know, you you employ me to to make really tough decisions, and that's what I'm doing with this, and I'm trying to make. The best decision giving really bad really bad information um, uh, and so, so you know uh um you know we're at 149 and i think jacob is probably right i'm not sure this is the peak um and you know my recommendation this evening and i'm not trying to um to uh, question any any input tonight but my recommendation tonight is if we if we exceed 200, um, I'm ready as the superintendent of this school district to transition to remote learning. So, yeah, I've just you know to follow up on Michelle's question. I mean, when Michelle made the comment about um, the Chromebooks and broadband, I'd still like to know how many kids or families don't have broadband. I mean, because if we get to this, I mean, I'm hoping like everybody else that the cases are not going to grow. But if it does how many students are not going to be able to do schooling? And then I agree with Katie about we need to check back in again, especially after the holidays, um, just to see where we're at. Okay. I have a Any question. Maisie, is that you? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Um, if we were to transfer to all remote learning, and I saw this in the chat box, but I also had this question myself, would, for example, just high school students be able to come to the school to do like their small extracurricular groups or like the shop classes, for example, or the CTE things, or would small groups still be able to come on campus at all or no? Yeah, Macy, my, the, my recommendation today um, that can change tomorrow based on new information. But my recommendation today is as long as our local health official will allow that to continue. Um, and we are, you know, we've implemented the appropriate safeguards that we can continue to support um, those types of events within our school system. Those are very small groupings, you know, usually one to five ratio. And so, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I have one, Sandy. Okay, Katie. Um, I was wanting um, Marty to remind us what it, um, once we go to remote learning, what it would be like to get back to where we are now with uh, in-person hybrid. Well, um, I think, uh, you know, it, first and foremost, um, you know, we need to, if we were to transition to full remote, we would need to get beyond this uptick that we have within our community and get back into a, you know, lower moderate zone. Um, once that occurs, um, then, um, you know, my vision would be Katie to have 
um, a fairly aggressive plan to get our students back on campus. We have, um, you know, implemented the staggered approach for K-6. And, um, you know, part of that was to build confidence in our procedures and protocols, and we've done that. Another part of that is to, you know, to allow our students to experience a new, um, you know, it's a, it's a new norm, right, this year. And so there's a lot of new rules as it relates to schools with regards to mask and social distancing. So, um, you know, enrolling back into when it's deemed safe to do so, um, and I don't know what that is today, Katie, but when it's deemed safe to do so, I could see us, you know, rolling back in, in a K-12, or excuse me, a K-6 movement, um, you know, and um, soon thereafter, look at that, uh, the 712 uh, secondary implementation. Okay, Katie, did that help you? Yes? Yes, thank you, Marty. Okay, any other comments or questions before I comment? Okay, uh, I have a few questions myself, Marty. Uh, my understanding from what, I'm gonna start with the governor. Uh, what the governor indicated was if, if people travel out of state for Thanksgiving and or Christmas or any time, if they traveled out last weekend to go to Seattle to shop or whatever, um, that they have to, they're required to, they're asked to, requested to self-quarantine for two weeks. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And we all know that there's no way we can, if people do not tell us that they have traveled, there's no way that we can ever know if they need to self-quarantine or not. Is that correct? That would be correct. Okay. Um, I'm thinking now about what Scott said about substitutes and staffing and what an issue that might be. If we have 10% of our um, uh, students or staff leave the state after, th I mean, and come back after Thanksgiving, that would, that would be a pretty large number of, if it were staff, of staff to get substitutes for. And I understand we have few substitutes is that correct 36 or something scott are you out there i am that 36 number was just for certificated and so don't forget we've got paraeducators out there we've got secretaries we've got custodians we've got bus drivers right um, and so as i said we haven't had a problem to this point filling our teaching subs but we have had a few days that we've not been able to fill our para-ed subs, and they're the ones that are doing a lot of this, you know, playground supervision and those kind of things, just as critical if we can't fill those as if we can't fill teaching positions. Okay, so that 36 included all staff, not just... That, that, was, that 36 was just certificate, just teachers. Just certificate. Just teachers, yes. Okay, all right. Um, so that's, that's a question that it is kind of, I see is a huge question mark. Uh, in this room as that who's going to travel, are they going to be honest and, and uh, quarantine themselves when they get back from wherever it is they're going? Uh, if not, and if they come back into the schools, whether it be staff or students, um, I think we will see, immediately see a big uptick in number of cases in the schools and maybe transmission in the schools. So that's just makes sense to me. Um, the uh, I want to say uh, that Sarah Methner and I have been to every elementary school and we have talked to every elementary teacher and administrator and staff member uh, while we were in those schools. Um, we, the majority, the huge majority said that they were so happy to be back in school. They did not indicate that they were afraid to be back in school. They did not indicate that they didn't want to be back in school. They indicated just the opposite. I think one or two of all the teachers we saw out of the five elementary schools, and Sarah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but it was a tiny number of teachers that showed some anxiety over uh, being in a classroom with children. So uh, I want to say to the public and to the teachers who are listening tonight and other staff members that are listening in tonight that I understand your anxiety. 
Uh, I still feel that we need to be in school because the staff that takes care of our schools and keeps them clean uh, are doing a, just a miraculous job. I, I'm, I'm so thrilled with the way they're, how clean the schools are. I think, um, and I know the public can't go into the schools now, but please take our word for it that things look so good and they do come in after recess, uh, uh, while they're at recess and after lunch and clean each room. Um, it's an amazing setup. The food service has been great. The bus service has been great. I think the children are so happy to be back in school. They seem to be working hard. We went one day when the fifth and sixth graders, it was the first day, the A day for the fifth and sixth graders, and they were so engaged in learning, they didn't even know we were in their rooms. So um, I'm glad they're back. I would like for, to, for them to stay back. Um, the, um, Sarah, I agree with you and the rest of the board members that the science should guide us. Uh, we also have to be aware of what is going, you know, what the anxiety level is of adults our staff adults and I think they're doing a great job. I'm, um, I don't know that they would always share with the school board member that they feel anxious or don't want to go to school, but they, the information that we got was very, very positive from the staff. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing. I think that um, if we do reach 200, um, I don't, I don't know, we could do that next Monday, we could do it tomorrow, I'm not sure, but I do agree that we have to give at least that week for the parents to get ready if, they, if we have to have that change to remote learning or virtual learning. But my concern after that, Katie, is your concern, when are we gonna come back? And so before we go out, if in fact we ever have to do that, I want to, uh, for the board to be back together again, Marty. I'd like to see that happen. I, do, I don't think we need to um, let that happen without us being able to discuss it. And I believe that's the consensus I hear here tonight. And I guess that's all. Um, With, um, yeah. Um, President Long and uh, fellow board members, um, with all due respect, um, you know, this, this pandemic has um, created um, a number of, of challenges um, mm -hmm. and it's nearly impossible to think for next week, let alone next month and, and, and how you know, uh, how this will impact our school and community. Um, that's statement number one. Statement number two, um, I, I wanna re, re address my, my recommendation. And again, the board can say no to my recommendation and that's, that's your discretion this evening. My recommendation clearly gives me the authority to close the schools when we hit 200 per 100,000. I am asking for that this evening. Um, as the, you know, the, the superintendent of this school district and the authority to do so, um, you know, in the safety and well being of staff and students, um, that's what I'm asking for this evening. And, um, and, and I do think, um, you know, if, uh, you know, we, um, can have a meeting um, in the very near future after that happens. I'm, I'm all for that. But, you know, I know each of us um, put as paramount, number one, the safety and well-being of staff. And, um, and, you know, I want to be able to have that authority by your action this evening in doing that. Well, since this is uh, um, a special meeting and we don't have action items and we can't vote on this, I do, um, I guess the consensus is I personally give you permission to do that. I still would like to know um, 
when we're getting up on it. And I know that you and I do talk and Sarah and you and I do have agenda meetings together, but I want all the board to be aware if we're creeping up onto, you know, if we're at 179, uh, I just want, I want to know that we know each day as, as the numbers change that we are clearly, uh, that that's communicated to each of us every day if it's getting close to that number. And if it, and you and Dr. Unthank are the only two people who can close schools. The board can't do that right now. And uh, so we depend on you to make that decision and I will support you in your request. I'd personally say that Marty's been really good about telling me if I ask um, or giving me a text of what the numbers look like. So Same. I appreciate that. Marty, do you currently have the authority to close the school or do you need it tonight? No. Um, you know, by way of the action that, that was taken for our plan, mm -hmm. um, I believe I have the authority, but this is a big decision. And, um, you know, I, therefore, the, the meeting this evening, the special board meeting, um, you know, I need to have guidance in my thinking from our board and that's what this evening is about and this this is a special meeting and and we can take action um, um, in on this uh, item anything that's not on the agenda we cannot take an action but this was publicized 24 hours in advance notice and so the board can take action this evening and um, I would be more comfortable you know, receiving clear guidance from the board this evening, whether it's my recommendation or another recommendation that the board, you know, um, creates this evening. Okay. Do Mark, I hear a motion from any of our board members? Hold, uh, I, I have another question. Yeah, I also have another question. Go ahead, Katie. Is that okay, Sandy? Can I go? Sure. Um, oh, sure. so are we, are, is, is the plan going to change then? Are you, is the plan going to change from 75 to 200? Like, are you going to update the plan so it says that? Is that, is that part of what's going on? <clears throat> I think the board will need to take action to plan, to change the plan. My advice to the board is to not change the plan until, um, you know, we do have clear guidance from the Department of Health. Um, actually, Sandy, if yeah. I wanted to discuss this, would we first move it? Yes, please. Okay. We need a motion, and then we can have discussion. I make a motion to approve that. Uh, to approve this. Well, wait. You need to say what the motion is. What you're approving? Mm. Uh, I make a motion to approve that Marty um, have the ability to close schools when we hit the mark of 200 cases per 100,000 in 14 days. Go ahead, a second. I will second that, but um, I think maybe it needs a little more fleshed out through a discussion. Mm -hmm. What um, I, I I I don't know. Do we need to say um, the the motion should include that we're going to continue school until? we reach that metric of 200 per i know we're very concerned with putting a number on things because mm -hmm. it may be something where at 170 uh we now are starting to see our hospitals unable to deal with things and we're seeing i i, I guess i want to flesh it out that we also need to say if there is shown that there's in school transmission i would like that to be a, a factor as well i feel like marty I guess I don't want to hamstring Marty in terms of how we're going to give him that authority to say when we hit 200, that's when we call it. I know, so what, you're I know what you mean. Exactly. And we may need to call it because we simply don't have staffing for. So I, I'm not sure what wording I want for that, but I guess I'd like it amended to that. to, to flesh well, that out. The motion has not been seconded, so we can he can twist it right now. So uh, we seconded. don't have to do amendments. I seconded, it. I seconded it, man, Sandy, just so that we could discuss it. But um, hmm. I, I would like to ask Jacob to, to then amend 
or somebody recommend an amended version? I think, Sarah, that what you've referenced is um, at any point in time, Yes. if Dr. Unthink determines, you know, based on, I mean, that could be at 179 and we have community transmission. Experience. Right. You know, that that is a given, um, you know, but on our current path, you know, where we're at now with minimal, if any, transmission within the school or no transition within the school transmission within the schools, um, you know, I, I think at, at, at 200 to one or 200 for every 100,000 is, is that, um, you know, spot where it's kind of, um, what I'm getting at is the, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that transition time, you know, it, it, and, and it's supported by the board. I think the, the caveat is Dr. Nunthink can overrule that at any time, you know, with regards to being more restrictive. Um, based right. on following findings. I think that's what Sarah was saying as well, is that you should be allowed to make that decision before 200 cases. I personally think we're getting too far into the weeds. And I think that okay. um, we um, talked about, we agreed to 200. I think we stay at that. We don't make a motion. Um, it was a question I asked um, Superintendent Reichdahl last week on the call regarding if we are um, divvy, if districts are deviating from their plan, do we have to redo um, the plan? He said no. And he said that superintendents are reporting to ESCs every week, so he knows what's going on. And you can find that on the website, OSPI website. I, there's so many variables. I mean, like Scott said, we could not have staff. Um, I don't want to, um, I think Marty has the authority um, working with Dr. Unthink to make the decision. Uh, Cindy, are you saying with no amendments? <clears throat> I'm not voting on any motion. I'm just going to say that because I think we're too far in the weeds. But Marty runs the day-to-day -day operation. We've given him the guidelines um, and the authority to do what he needs to get done. Jenny, will you read the motion, please? I'd be happy to, President Long. I just put it in the chat so you guys could read it as well but I changed it to, and if you want me to um, update this, I'm happy to do that as well. It is recommended that the board of directors approve the recommendation from Superintendent Brewer to maintain in-person learning where we currently are until we reach 200 per 100,000 positive cases in the community. At that point, Port Angel School District would transition to remote learning at the end of that given week. Okay. With, 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 uh, with some exceptions. You want that included? No. No, I but don't think already, we ought to include already, that. We've already, I don't want to include that, but we've already discussed that. It could be staffing related. It could be community transmission related. It could be the order of Dr. Hunting. I mean, there's a number of variables there. But given our current circumstance, where we're at today, where we have no, no positives within our school, no community transmission within our school, what I'm asking for with that recommendation is the authority to close schools when we hit 200 cases. Okay, so I'm, I need to just clarify this. Cindy does not feel that like we need to have any official recommendation. Superintendent Brewer, do you feel like you would like an official uh, support of your recommendation? I think under most circumstances, I agree with uh, Director Kelly. Um, you know, this, this is the management side of the district. But this is a big decision, and I need to have, um, I need to know that, that our board stands behind the work of the school district. So I would um, like to step outside that lane for a minute and um, ask for um, support of our board. Okay. And you feel that that, that, sit, that uh, Jenny just posted gives you what you need? Well, it's not what I need, it's what we need. Okay, I understand, but yes. And I want, and, and, and I want you know, um, you know, the board to take a position on that, with with obvious other factors. I mean, we might have to close for other factors, but if given our right. circumstance right now, um, you know, and and we're doing well in the schools with our safeguards and practices, and you know, uh, most folks feel very safe, but when we hit two hundred. I think that's our that's the point where um, it's it begins to be for me personally um, uh, uncomfortable and, okay. and I want to be able to maintain 
um, the safety that we have within our schools. Um, and I know you do as well. So I am asking for, for an action tonight from the board so that I know I'm, I'm working um, on behalf of the majority of the board this evening. Okay. I was, there's some slight confusion there. Slight confusion. Um, only in the fact that um, I made the motion to give you the power to do that when we hit 200. Um, but if I were voting on uh, moving the number from 75 to 200, I would vote no. So there was some confusion for me. Um, I 100% want you to have the authority to close it as soon as possible is what I was making that motion for. Um, but I'm ready for a vote. Okay. Katie, I have a question. It says, I have a question. So at the end of the week, it says at the end of that week. So let's say we get to 200 on Tuesday. We're going to keep kids in school until Friday. You read the motion. That doesn't mean that Marty can just send him home. It means he's got to wait till Friday. That was part of his recommendation in order to uh, give parents, families a chance to firm things up. Instead of the next day, you have to, sorry, I know you had work tomorrow, but guess what? Now you have a five-year-old who has to be home. So I think that was the point of that. And I, I'm, I agree with that. I understand that this is hard for everybody, but I, the least hard we can make it for parents and families. I mean, these are our, these are our customers, are the students and the families. So I agree with that caveat. So I'm reading the motion. So basically it just says, um, regardless if Dr. Unthink tells us, okay, we're at 180, you're going to, we're going to close the schools. Marty can't do it until we get to 200. That's what the no. motion says. Jacob, do you have any, I mean, you made the motion, so I'm depending on you to, is that the way you want to keep the motion? No, no. The motion I made wasn't about moving the number from 75 to 200, which is what that motion says. The motion I made was just giving Marty explicit authority to close them or to close the school without seeking the board's approval. That's the motion I was making. The All right. Requested was 200 cases for 100,000. I was giving him the explicit authority to do that without consulting us. That was the motion I made. Okay. Okay, Sandy, to follow the rules, let's go ahead and call the vote. Um, and let's just call the vote right now and then we'll. So you're calling for the question, Sarah? I'm calling for the question. All right. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that uh, we give Marty permission to close the school. Yes. At, at uh, 200 per, for, per 100,000 uh, cases. And um, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. 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 Jacob? I said no. I said no. Okay, so the motion does not pass. That leaves us. Uh, I guess that leaves us to if you do you want to re uh, make a new motion? No, I think that someone else should make a motion so we can have some clarity because I didn't do that correctly. And you did just fine. Um, I'm reading finally I'm seeing the motion in front of me now. So I'm just concerned um, as I stated before if Dr. Unthink thinks that we get to 175 or we get cases in the school before 200 that's why i think that we give we hire the superintendent and we give him direction we passed we passed a plan i appreciate that we're having a meeting tonight but i really feel that we've given marty the authority to make the decision and marty i stand behind by your recommendation tonight um but i don't think we need to put ourselves in paint ourselves into a um corner so you don't believe that we need a motion. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Uh, Sarah? I, I, reading the leaves, I believe that a motion is 
warranted at this point, and um, I'm trying to frame one in my head that will encompass all of our our needs, which is um, uh, I move that the Port Angeles School Board Board of Directors authorizes Superintendent Brewer in conjunction with best practices, the Departments of Health, and uh, recommendations from um, Dr. Unthank, moves the Port Angeles School District to uh, cease operate in-person learning when it becomes necessary. I don't know. My language is not good right now. But to that effect. Did that sum up what people are hearing or no? I'm waiting for a second, Sarah. Oh, I can second that one. Okay. Now discussion. Okay, so I'll lead off the discussion um, by saying, Marty, um, uh, I trust your your um, your management. I think you're doing an outstanding job. Um, we are in really difficult scenarios. Um, you know, it's really hard for uh, the public and teachers to understand where the board might be coming from. And I think that um, we're doing the best we can. Um, I. Um, I'm willing to give you permission to close the school if you feel like you need to. So thank you, Sarah. Any other discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we give, uh, I can't see the motion. Uh, Jenny, can you put that up somewhere? Uh, I'm still, um, trying to uh, wordsmith it so it's what everybody's trying to get it on uh, what they want so um, I have it as it is recommended that the board of directors approve superintendent brewer with guidance from county health official dr. Allison Unthink to move to complete remote learning until further notice I don't know what you are I think we Sarah aren't you talking about moving to remote learning uh in conjunction with the recommendations of the, uh, uh, the health un the health doctor, the health person. Department of Health and Dr. Unthank. Superintendent Brewery has something to say. Yeah. Um, yeah that, um, that recommendation is not quite what I'm looking for. Uh, okay. So maybe. Maybe we uh, just make this, um, my concern is this, um, as the leader of this organization empowered by you, and you know, based on what we know today and what we think may happen in the future, um, when we reach a caseload of 200 to every 100,000, I want the authority to close school, um, regardless of um, any other governing body. I want to close the school. And that's, that's, um, that's the direction that, that I'm heading with that recommendation. And I think it would be in the safety and well-being of not just our students and staff, but our community at large. Um, and anything prior to that, I mean, because I don't know I mean, there's a, there's a lot of other factors involved here. It could be staffing related and we, we can't staff. It could be related to community transmission. Dr. Unthink could close this tomorrow. That overrides this conversation. Yep. Um, so as long as the Board of Five heard exactly what I just said and has no um, uh, 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 objection to, to that, I'm comfortable. Okay. But I don't I will... want to but I don't want to surprise any of our five board members. So outside of staffing issues, outside of Dr. Unthink saying, Marty, it's not the time and place, or you have community transmission, we need to close that school. I I am going to and I want to, by way of board support, take action when we hit two hundred to one. And um, based on you know, conversations that are being had across the state. 
Um, and I think our staff um, and our families, um, you know, need to, to need to have a, a, an understanding of how we, you know, given the circumstances today, how we may, how we are going to make a decision. And I think, I think that's important. Um, all while honoring the State Department of Health and Dr. Hunter. I would like to amend my motion uh, to simply say the Port Angeles Board of Direct Directors gives authority to Superintendent Brewer to close schools. At 200 cases. I'm not gonna put anything, I'm not gonna bracket it with anything. Superintendent Brewer has, a, has the authority to do what he just deems needs to be done. Well, Sarah, he already has that mm -hmm. authority. I understand he's asking for our backup. And and I, will, and I, will, I will revoke that. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's somewhat right. problematic tonight, so I will revoke that. But okay. based on what I just said, is there any objection by any of the five board members and what I just said? No. 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 Proving to be difficult, but you have my absolute support in this. Sarah, would you like to withdraw your motion? I would withdraw every motion I have made or thought of tonight. Okay. Uh, um, um, do you want to look at the newest recommendation in the chat that you worked so hard on? <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think so, Jenny. Sarah's withdrawn her motion. Uh, the board has agreed. I believe I'm right about this. I'm looking at three of you, uh, three voting, and Cindy's there somewhere. Uh, the, vo the board has agreed that, uh, that they will support Marty when he comes to the conclusion that 200 is there, and it may happen before that. But we're get what we're doing, Marty, I, I believe, is saying to you, we trust you, we give you permission to do what you think is best for our students and our staff. That's what I'm saying to you. So Marty, were you looking for um, maybe a recommendation change from 75 to 200? Is that what you were looking for? No. no. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm perfectly great with you um, doing what you're doing. Thank okay. you very much. Make the call when you need to. Uh, Marty? Are you okay with that? Yes. Or would the, I mean, we're on, we're on, uh, we have, although we have not voted, we have verbally supported you in your recommendation. We, if this is recorded, it is, will be recorded in the minutes. Um, so I think you're perfectly safe and I think we're perfectly safe. And, and, and I, I apologize this evening for this. It feels awkward. Um, I apologize for that, but um, this is a big decision. And I, I, I just feel, and the only way we can do our work is to have time to meet. And so I appreciate this conversation this evening to make sure that, you know, the thought process that, you know, um, that, that, that I'm working on is, is what, what you and expect from your superintendent. So I appreciate the, the guidance and the, um, the support that's, that's come out this evening. Okay. Um, are there any other, um, let me look here, any other issues? I think we've covered our action item. Okay, anything else for the good of the uh, order? then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you everybody for your attendance. I'm glad we had a lot of the uh, public here tonight or staff or whoever, we had a good, a good, uh, good crowd with us tonight. I'm sure we'll be hearing from a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> I expect it, yeah. There were uh, lots of people here tonight, so yes. Yeah, a bunch. Uh, do, it's just do great. You do you all feel comfortable in answering questions now when they come to you, board members? Yes. Yeah. Feel okay? Yeah. Katie? Okay, Cindy? Cindy left us? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm leaving now, and uh, I hope everybody uh, has a good week coming up.
Let's all hope that people uh, act rationally, wear their masks, social distance, wash their hands, and let's all stay safe. Have a good evening. Good evening. Night. Good night. night.